Ya estamos en el D23, la convención máxima de fans de Disney. Es la segunda vez que viene sin escape. No es todos los años, van dejando uno sí, uno no, uno sí, uno no. Y estamos acá para todos los fans de Disney, Marvel y recientemente Lucasfilm. O sea, todo lo que es Star Wars. Hay un montón de fans, un montón de cosas chéveres que ver. Así que bienvenidos a D23 2013. ¡Vamos! No solamente encontramos arte inspirado en Disney, ¿no? Como todos los personajes, Goofy, Tío Rico, toda la, la sirenita y todos los personajes, sino que ahora también tenemos la incorporación de Marvel, ¿no? Así que han incorporado las obras de arte, estas es increíbles de Spider-Man, Capitán América, y esas son obras de arte hechas por artistas que se inspiran en ellos, pero si tú no tienes mucho dinero para comprarte, por ejemplo, 495 cocos, tu cuadrito de Spider-Man, tienes las opciones más económicas que son impresas así en papel y son reproducciones, ¿no? Por ejemplo, Iron Man, ahí está. Y yo te digo, ¿cuánto cuesta? Tranquilo, esta cuesta 50 cocos, por ejemplo. Y para algo más clásico, para los románticos, tenemos ahí a, a Blancanieves, Winnie the Pooh este, y otras princesas más Disney. Así que para que le des a tu caso un toque pues diferente con los personajes que tanto nos gustan. Eso es para los recontra fans de Disney. ¿Te imaginas llevarte un pedazo de una atracción a tu casa? Subasta. Aquí puedes llevarte el carro. Así es, amigos. Como lo escuchan, el carro de Monster Sync. Se lo llevan a su casa. Este carro está en una atracción Disney y la gente está ofertando dinero para comprarlo. Comenzó en 700 dólares y está acercándose a los 2,000. Nos lo llevamos, chiqui. Puede ser, ¿ah? ¿eh? Aquí estamos el Chato, tú, Mari, Aldo... Ya. Ah, no, el Chato ya no. <risa> Esto es Disney D23, la máxima experiencia para un fan Disney. Vamos a hablar de esta oportunidad de las películas de Marvel, de lo que viene con los Muppets y además conversar con algunas leyendas que tienen mucha historia en este legendario estudio. Por supuesto, estamos en la alfombra roja. Bueno, no hay alfombra roja, pero igual, las estrellas frente a la cámara de Cine Escape. Vamos. We got a whole base in the original mythology of the character and also the Marvel comic base. So as you as a filmmaker also allowed to create or put new things or new twists of the character or the story? Yes, I mean, uh, the, the, there's such a vast, you know, amount of material on both sides, as you said. Uh, the mythology you can you can read for, you know, years. Uh, the Marvel Universe, I, they, when I first turned up at Marvel, they um, they gave me the full collected works of Thor, the comics, and it's, you know, it's, it's literally like this. You know, in the Marvel Universe, these are not gods as, as such. They are superhuman creatures. Uh, they're an alien race, and all that's true. But for me, partly because I love history, I, there was, I had a real affection for the stuff that grew or connected more directly to the Norse mythology. So I, I pulled, my intention was to pull more of that. And that, the way Thor looks, you know, I, I wanted to look like a, a warrior prince. Hello, Natalie. Nice to meet you. How are you? Hi. Mexico and Peru. So you got an amazing career also in independent movies and huge blockbusters. So Star Wars and now Marvel. So how fun for you as an actor to play, you know, in these kind of movies? It's really, really fun. And, you know, when you come to places like this, you really remember that this is what people go to the movies for, to be really entertained for a few hours, go to worlds that they couldn't imagine on their own that are just so, so fantastical. And, and um, you know, they're so enthusiastic and passionate about it. No, you are kind of a uh, Disney princess because you was in Star Wars and now you are here. Know, only recently, <laughs> only recently, because Star Wars is right a new addition. And you are kind of princess also in the in the world of Thor. I guess so. Lucky, <laughs> lucky me. If only I could take the tiara home. <laughs> Pero, hey Tom, nice to see you again. Nice to see you. How are you? I need to go a bit more in the shot here. Okay. <laughs> Tom, I always heard that playing the bad guy is always more fun for an actor. Why, why actors used to say that? There's a phrase, I don't know who invented it, like, the devil plays all the best tune. Uh, but I think it's because, firstly, that they, you can kind of cut loose a bit, and all the rules that you have to abide by, or you, you feel duty-bound to abide by in your own life, are, uh, these the villains don't care about rules, so you get to sort of, like, be a kid again, in a way. And, but secondly, it's genuinely because I think 
villains are the most complex and their, psych their psychologies are always fascinating. What are their motivations? And as an actor, I've always called acting a kind of like 3D anthropology. Like we're, we're sort of digging around in, in, in what makes human beings tick. Like, so they're just, I think they're just like fascinating psychologically, but they're also really fun. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tom. Pleasure as always. Espero que hayan disfrutado esta cobertura exclusiva por segunda vez consecutiva sin escape en D23. Volvemos al set.